Okay, so this is a video I have made about Hel Hurricane Helene. So be aware that now, by this point, which is the Sunday after Hurricane Helene, things are definitely different and things have improved in Asheville to a certain extent, though I think the full enormity of what's happened is definitely setting in. There isn't a lot of pictures of the neighbourhoods or areas or anything because I just was in such a tailspin, I didn't think to do it. Um, so that's that. I also think there's plenty of pictures around of the devastation. I don't need to be adding to that. It's really weird to see how at the beginning we, we, we didn't have a full idea of how of the enormity of it. It is a little bit interesting and it took me this long to do it because I just was, we've been just, you know, busy trying to get settled where we are right now. And also, I think I was a little reluctant to look at it. The other thing that's kind of weird is I had done a video uh, prior to this one, a like kind of chill with me video way before Hurricane Helene happened. And I was all ready to, to post that and then just didn't get around to it. And then after Hurricane Helene, it seemed like a really strange thing to post. I might still post that since I put effort into it. Um, but yeah, our lives have completely changed. And, you know, I'm... I'm yeah, there'll be more about all of that at another time. Anyway, this is the stuff that I put together uh, during the hurricane and just after the hurricane. So um, it's Thursday evening and we are waiting for Hurricane Helene, which has already started to approach Florida. And we're in Asheville, we don't normally get hurricanes. All done? Yes. Yeah, Great job. Cece is helping she's doing an excellent job she's clearing out the closet because this is where we need to go if the wind gets really really bad this is the best place in the house it's on the ground floor Can I throw this away? yeah it's in the it's on the ground floor and it's got no external walls no glass so we're hoping we won't need it or if we do need it not for very long this is all the stuff that we're going to use to make it comfy We've got emergency snacks, shoes if we need to evacuate, um, what else? Oh, a bag of stuff that we might need to grab, including keys and ID and things. Got some games up there and calming treats for the dog. Good thing about being a witch is you always have lots of candles and lighters. So we've got plenty of those and torches. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So we had Hurricane Helene come through yesterday. So right now we have no power. We started to get really heavy rainfall Thursday. Actually, what day is it today? Oh, it's Saturday. Okay, so it was Wednesday evening that we started to get pretty heavy rainfall. And in fact, it started to flood on Wednesday evening. Asheville has two rivers and obviously with it being a mountainous region there's lots of high bits and then there's low bits and if you're in one of the low bits that's where the water is going to collect we have the Swannano River and we have the French Broad River and by Wednesday evening they had I think the Swannano had definitely breached I don't know if French Broad did uh I think it but I think it did um that's not uncommon we get a lot of when we get a lot of rain here they do tend to flood, um, but this was just the beginning. So Wednesday evening, so on Wednesday evening, that's when it rained, started to rain really heavily. We got some lightning and uh, we still had power. Thursday, heavy, heavy rain, not like torrential, but just continual rain. It didn't stop. Um, and that was throughout Thursday. And we still had power. By then, colleges had closed, schools had closed. Chad was at home. I was at home. Cece was at home. So we were all fine. And the good thing about that is it gave us time to prepare. So we had been told that there was the possibility of a tornado, though, in fact, in this area, the tornadoes don't really reach us because of the mountains. They get kind of dispersed. But heavy, heavy wind. So we wanted to make sure that if it got really bad or if something like a tree hit us or whatever, we had a safe place to be. 
and we also made sure that we had uh, things like batteries and torches and things and I had filled up several containers with drinkable potable water by that point because there's always the concern that the water will go off and often there are leaks in the pipes with flooding so we started to get all of that ready Cece was amazing she knew stuff I certainly didn't know she said make sure you've got shoes that are easy to get on in case you need to evacuate things like that we talked about what to do with the pets and yeah we just waited it out we hunkered down we just watched tv and stuff on thursday because we still have power and that was all fine and then by early friday morning the power was gone and we were definitely in the middle of a very windy hurricane um again we just hunkered down it all kind of eased off by early afternoon and we went outside and we looked at our yard and our, or our garden and everything looked fine. Um, a couple of moderately heavy tree limbs had fallen, but not many. And then I looked around the garden and I was like, oh, we're, we're good. You know, no major flooding. We were very, we were very lucky. No major flooding, no major kind of things hit the house. Chad did a brilliant job on Thursday. He just went out and put all of our patio furniture, all of our like plant pots and stuff away in sheltered areas so that if there was really heavy winds, they weren't going to like catapult around the garden, which was amazing that he did a great job. At that point, we were still get, able to get messages. So, but then by Friday afternoon, we couldn't contact really hardly anybody. We went out, I went outside onto the road when things had kind of calmed down and, th and it stopped raining and everything. And it was pretty intense so the the our side of the road we'd had like a small tree fall but it wasn't a, a big deal and I was like oh we survived and then I looked to my right and a oh my god it must be at least a 50 it might even be bigger 50 foot or more pine had completely uprooted and had basically done this across our road from one side to the other and it had at first I thought oh wow it's hit kind of between two houses but it hadn't it had hit somebody's house it had hit their porch and smashed one of their windows and thank goodness they were safe but it made a real mess of their house that tree is still there it of course pulled down a power line and one of the telegraph poles is listing towards someone else's house I think it's still there, you just can't see it. We tried to contact the energy company, the electricity company. We could not get through. We couldn't get through to anybody really. And cell network has been pretty much zero. Obviously no Wi-Fi because there's no power. So it's been really hard to contact people. That, to me, that's been the hardest thing, I think, for a lot of people was because you can't check on anyone. You can't see if everybody else is OK. We've got friends all over the city and I'm sure people have been trying to contact us. One of my friends in Baltimore managed by some miracle to get through and was like, is everything OK? And I said, yes, everything's OK. I can't contact my family in Britain to let them know we're OK. Um, and I'm sure they're seeing more than we are of the aftermath because they have power. So they're probably seeing the news and everything. So that kind of is worse because they're probably looking at it going, oh, I hope they're OK. There are vast swathes of Asheville that are basically completely underwater. So many businesses are just going to be mud banks now. 
it's so sad. That's really sad. And I stayed, I was awake last night thinking about just the massive cleanup that people are going to have. It's, it's, I don't even want to think about it. It actually makes me quite, quite, quite sad. Um, I did walk around the neighborhood a little bit later on and, and we'd had trees apparently fall almost on every road that that was between here and the Peace Gardens because that's where I was going. And our neighbours came out and cut a lot of the trees up that had fallen down to move them so people could get through uh, roads and things because otherwise the roads are impassable. So uh, I do want to say that our neighbours and our neighbourhood is great. <laughs> they went out and moved trees. Somebody, I, one of my friends said that their neighbour has a gas cooker. So even though the power is off, they could make, they could heat water, made them, made them coffee. And, you know, we're, we're trying to kind of see if anybody needs anything. Our neighbour gave us a stove to use, which was awesome because now we can boil water. We still have running water. Um, but we have been, but our, one of our councillors, Kim Roney, who is on our city council, who we've known for years, is a wonderful, wonderful person. She came round in her car telling neighbourhoods because we can't use the cell phone network, isn't reliable, saying make sure you boil, boil your water, make sure you can serve as much water as you can because we could lose water. Um... So yeah, we don't know when the power's going to come back on, obviously. We don't know when the whether the water's going to go out. We don't have any communication. We're just kind of... Chad's gone over to the Peace Gardens to see if they need help because our friends were from the Peace Gardens were helping the neighbourhood and driving around seeing if they could do anything. Um, this is a very stark reminder of why climate change... Um, is such a catastrophic thing for human beings. We are so fragile. We, without electricity and without means of getting running water and without our cell networks, it, it, a lot of people were in a tailspin. We've evolved to be really non-resilient in those respects, but we are still supporting each other. Anyway, this is, so this is how it is now on Saturday. We're now a few days after Hurricane Helene came through Asheville. And each day has been incredibly surreal and different from the last. So on Friday, it was sort of like, oh, this feels like not so bad. Okay, some trees are down, we'll be okay, sort of thing. Almost nowhere has power. I'm on one street where my neighbours live that has power. Nowhere else in Asheville seems to have power. We have uh stay we're staying here to charge phones and things so everything sort of stopped raining and things on friday saturday friday afternoon we thought everything was fine or not fine but we didn't have a lot of information about how bad it was saturday morning i kind of went over to the peace gardens and we rallied a little bit and we're like we can do this we can do this you know this is fine we've got community we've got great neighbors neighbors had come out and we're already chopping down trees and everything else and at that point we still had water so it was like okay no power but that's okay and then this street uh, that i'm on was the street including the peace gardens got power so they were sort of like we've got power we've got a bit of water but we had been told the water was going to stop by Saturday evening, uh, we had come back over here from our house after, you know, boiling water and stuff, because you still, even though the water was running, you had to boil it. We had no power, so we had a an, another neighbour lend us a camp stove because we couldn't find ours. So we boiled a bunch of water, and then we came over here on Saturday evening to, to spend some time with neighbours um, at, at one of their in one of their gardens in, in their driveway and that's when we started to really get more information we were starting to get more of a picture of how of how devastating it had been or is still um where to start so there is an area my favorite area of Asheville is the river arts district somebody showed me some photographs they'd gone and had a look at the play at the area i couldn't figure out 
anything. It was all underwater. I could just about figure out some of the areas around Foundy where there's like graffiti and stuff. Then we started to get information that several towns had just been outside of Asheville had been washed away. Two highways at that point also were washed away. So getting in and out of Asheville, it sounded like was virtually impossible. Both of us went to bed on Saturday a little bit freaked out and going okay well we're trapped here and we have no power and we are about to lose water and also food you know food's gonna run out chad over the last couple of days has been helping out in the neighborhood sawing down um trees that had fallen in neighbors yards and you know just kind of trying to do his thing do his bit but i also said to him you know he kind of needs to slow down on that a little bit partly because He's getting super sweaty and dehydrated and then it's like we don't have enough water <laughs> to like make sure that you are clean and um and, and hydrated and i already feel a little bit desiccated honestly i'm not drinking enough water i'm trying to be careful i was pretty stressed yesterday i lost my appetite completely and hardly ate anything all day then it was just sort of like trying to find some equilibrium cece was having a lot of fun with her neighbors they had the walkie talkies out so they could communicate because cell network is still very spotty and I can only get messages to and from certain people. So that was also hard. And I haven't been, hadn't been able to, and still haven't been able to contact my family in Britain because even though WhatsApp runs on the cell network, it's just not powerful enough to, to, to do that. Thankfully, I have a friend, my wonderful friend in Baltimore, who was more than happy to um, relay messages to my sister through Facebook because they, and they'd never met before. So that was really great. By Sunday evening, we figured out that several of our friends who have kids that Cece was kind of hanging out with, they were passing the time together, were leaving town, which is understandable, which meant I was, that Cece uh, was losing all the friends that she was playing with. We talked about it and we have come to the decision that Cece and I will leave. Um, you actually can leave. There's one highway that apparently is clear. I want to maintain a sense of normalcy for Cece as much as possible. That's kind of my, she's my priority at the moment um there's so much i can't control i can control how cc thrives or doesn't thrive if we had water we would stay but it's the the water situation and it's going to be not a matter of days it's going to be a matter of weeks apparently i can do a little bit of homeschooling with her because i'm not working right now i, I my college has been turned into an emergency shelter yeah that's the decision everything else survived looks like that was a little bit rotten already and then we're gonna like we're at the we're at the rec center and uh we just noticed someone had set up a little fire pit there which makes sense why not So we left Asheville. I'm in Charlotte with CC. Chad is back in Asheville. Um, but I did want to show you how awesome my kid is. She's been so prepared. Sometimes even when we were super stressed, she was trying to help. That, that wasn't always <laughs> easy, but I was about to go and find her to see if she was getting ready to go. And I find that she has packed up quietly, zipped up her suitcase, and put it in the hallway without me even saying anything. She's nine. <laughs> there it is. My uh, little refugee's suitcase, ready to go to Durham. Next up is Durham. We're gonna go and be with my brother-in-law and his boys, Cece's cousins. I think she's really excited about that. Um, did see a little bit of the aftermath of the, of the hurricane as we were driving up I-26, which is the only road open. They did advise people not to leave if they didn't have to because they wanted to keep the roads clear, but the roads were really clear. There were no traffic jams or anything. And um, yeah, lots of places that basically look like mud swamps at the moment, lots of trees down. Driving through the mountains was a tiny bit scary, but not because it was treacherous, but it was just the awareness of how quickly things can change. Um, 
Charlotte was also hit, but not so bad. Um, they didn't lose water. They lost power for a few hours. There's definitely been some fallen trees and things, um, but they seem to be doing better. No internet here. And I still haven't figured out, I don't know why there is no internet anywhere. Um, Sound network's better, so I've been able to contact my family back in Britain. So, yeah, um, off to Durham today. Okay, it is, I think, Wednesday. Um, so how many days is that after Hurricane Helene hit? I, I don't know. Um, it came on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This has been about four days. Cece and I made it to Durham yesterday. So we're staying with my brother-in-law very very grateful for him he has been wonderful we've got a nice comfortable room we've got our own bathroom um he said we can stay as long as we want to or need to and that's been fantastic also also you know his partner um also his partner has sort of said you know if people need to come and stay she has extra space so that is really wonderful um chad had to stay and he's working with manor it wasn't an easy decision to leave honestly and yesterday i felt very kind of emotional about it because partly leaving chad don't want to leave chad but also um when there are so many things we could help with it felt very hard to leave but at the same time Oh yeah, that's a good point. So Cece just reminded me that my brother-in-law is going to come back with the dog soon and they are rambunctious. Anyway, um, yeah, it wasn't an easy thing to do to leave. Uh, leaving Chad was hard, but also leaving knowing that there's so much work that needs to be done and support. But I do have a kid and I just didn't think that it was a good... If we can leave, it probably is better for the fact that we are using resources that other people are going to need who absolutely cannot leave and ha have to stay for whatever reason so water is at a premium right now there is no running water we have been told that it could be weeks before water uh, we get running water again in the actual area it sounds like the whole water system kind of got busted when the rain and the flood happened it sounds like it was pretty bad so that's one thing. Chat, I can't really help a lot when I have a kid in tow. You know, I can't do stuff. It's not really fair on Cece, in my opinion, to drag her around while we're trying to help people. So that's the other thing. Um, if I can't help, then it's better that we leave and the water we've already conserved and the rations and everything, because food is also, it's going to be hard to get food a little bit. If I can leave that stuff for Chad, that's better because he is working really hard with Manor Food Bank, which is a disaster relief organisation to distribute food and everything else. Since he needs to stay, it's good that we, we leave. And also it means he doesn't have to worry about us, deal with our probably our stress of being there too. Um, the lack of running water is the thing that's keeping us away and will probably keep us away until some sort of solution is found. I have been in situations with no running water before uh, when I was in Zambia. I cannot convey to people how quickly it wear, can wear a person down. And a lot of people's time is going to be taken up going to different depots or different drop-off points where water is available. But there is another problem with that. There are no... Um, very little gas is available in Asheville right now. From what I understand, there is some, but probably not enough for the amount of people. And I've heard that what tends to happen, understandably, is when there is rumours of a gas place opening, like a gas station, everybody goes there, it's a long line. Sometimes it is limited to how much you can take, which is very wise, so people don't, you know, hoard or whatever. Some places will only take cash. The ATMs aren't really working from what I understand. So there's this whole kind of knock-on effect of all the different services that have been knocked out. And so even trying to get water, if your car doesn't have gas in it, or if you don't have a car, there are people in Nashville that don't have cars, that's become a problem. Um, getting information about those drop-off points has been a challenge. People don't have internet. 
there are places with internet hotspots you still have to get there um and find out like where there are where free food is being given out which is happening all over the city i mean i want to commend all of the organizations that have really rolled their sleeves up wheeled kitchen apparently is in Asheville, but also a lot of the local places but you need to know about that and so if you can't access the internet they've been posting on facebook you can't necessarily go to those places so for a lot of people cell network is still pretty spotty and also if you don't have power sometimes you can't ch charge your cell phone so it's it's a bit difficult inside the city and also not just in Asheville, of course or the other places that have been affected so um yeah so that's that's what's happening right now i'm going to try and help as best i can from here with maybe communications um and sharing what i know and what i understand is going on we have an incredible community i i am very heartened from what i understand people are doing and from the groups that i am sort of part of online that are trying to like get help to people and support one another the groups i'm part of the pagan groups have been incredible there's been a real sense of let's get down and help people what can we do that's been incredible for the most part this is bringing out the best in people and that's important to remember but i do think that the banding together I do think that's going to be what saves us all. We do need to rely on official services. FEMA are there. The National Guard have gone in. Lots of different places are helping. And I think we also need to make sure that we are looking out for each other. And that's that's going to be what saves us, I think. Pat Manning from Memphis, Tennessee. So Daddy's wearing glasses, as we see. So you just, we wanna, there we he is, there's Daddy. Daddy. Yay, Yay. there's Dad. Uh, Looking very oh, handsome. Guys. Yay, there's Daddy. <laughs> okay, so if you can hear us, we're coming to the park to give our neighbour and our friend Lila a surprise. It's her birthday. They also evacuated from Asheville, so I think this will be really special, won't it, Cece? Yeah. It's her seventh birthday and we can't wait to see her. Yeah. If you made it through the whole video, this is a much longer one than I normally do. Please know that there are some resources below of how you can help. I get a lot of texts and, and messages asking how people can help. I've got uh, three links down there for donations. I know sometimes people want to do more, but donations are great. So also be aware that in the aftermath, everybody wants to help. But let's keep in mind the fact that we will need to be helping in the long term too. Yeah.